Hi everyone. A while ago I released a free library of Chinese patterns and I received a request from someone asking me how I did those patterns. In this quick tutorial I'll show you the basic principles of how I created those Chinese patterns. And we're going to use a fairly simple example and create a square pattern. Let's switch to the front view and I'm going to drag in the reference image that I need and drop it in my front view. If I hit Shift V, I can go to my viewport settings and on the back tab, I'm going to change the transparency to something like this. When I created that library of Chinese patterns, I did both polygon versions and spline versions. So for those of you who are only interested in creating a spline version, you probably want to use a different technique for that. But because we're going to do both versions, we're going to start with a polygon version. And the reason I'm going to start with a polygon version is because I can create proper topology. Whereas if I create the spline version first, it's going to be a little bit harder to, to turn the spline version into a polygon version. So uh, the first thing we want to do is have a look at this pattern. And you can see that we have a symmetry, for example, this part here is symmetrical to this one. This entire part is symmetrical to the right and all of the top is symmetrical to the bottom. And that means we basically only need to create this part of the pattern. The next question is, what does this pattern consist of? And I guess with this one, it's actually pretty obvious to see, although you know, when you take a look at the entire thing, it may not be obvious at first, but essentially this entire pattern consists of a grid of squares. And the technique I use to create most of these patterns is I actually started with a square. But we're not actually going to start with a square. We're going to start with a plane which basically is a square, but you'll see why I'm using a plane in a second. I'm going to switch that to minus Z and I'll just use one by one segments for now. And if I hit NH on the keyboard, I can switch to wireframe mode. And this plane is 400 by 400 centimeters. So I think our reference image is a little bit big. Let's change that to 400 by 400. And there we go. It should fit right into our plane here. So next what we can do is we can increase the width segments for that plane and for this pattern it seems that we need 12 of 12 segments here. But you can see they're not really matching up with the reference image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T for scale and I'm going to scale this plane down and put these edges right in between two of these squares. We don't have to be super exact, but you can see now this is lining up a lot better. And because we have a square shape here, we can also use 12 segments for the height. And depending on the pattern and depending on what you want to do, you could make this editable and select all the polygons and use exclude inner. But I'm going to use a slightly different technique. One of the reasons is because this area here is a little bit different from the rest of this pattern. So what I'll do instead is I'll make the plane editable by hitting C on the keyboard, then switch to polygon mode. And I'm going to select one of these squares, hit UI to invert the selection and I'm going to delete everything else. And then I'm going to optimize the object to get rid of all of the points that were left when we deleted the polygons. And now I'm going to select this polygon and you can see it's 32.5 by 32.5, that's fine. If it was a weird number, I would change it to something even, but I think I'm going to stick with 32.5. Uh, now we need to create these areas in between the holes. And in order to do that, I'm going to hit I for extrude inner. And let's do an offset of maybe 3.5. A 
and we know that this square is 32.5 by 32.5. We can put this in a cloner and use a distance of 32.5 to clone it along the x-axis. Before I clone these, uh, or before I clone this square, I want to change the topology. What we have here is actually the best topology, but but what I want instead is straight lines all across this pattern. It's going to make some things easier, for example, deleting edges, stuff like that. So what I'm going to do before I clone this is I'm going to use the knife tool, hold down shift, and I'll make cuts like this. And then we can select these four edges here and just use melt to get rid of them. Let's switch that cloner back on. Select it and we need 12 copies. And we can put this cloner in another cloner. And we need a distance of 32.5 or rather minus 32.5 on the y-axis. And because this is a square pattern, we're going to change the count to 12 again. If we make these cloners editable, we get a whole bunch of objects, which is not what I want. So I'm going to put everything in a connect object. And I'm going to make this editable. And then we can get rid of a lot of the geometry again. So in order to make things easier for you to see, I'm going to delete this half. I'm going to delete this half first. I also need to get rid of these points down here. No, we don't. Let's keep those. And now we can also get rid of these points here. And in edge mode, I'm going to double click on each of these edges here to select the entire loop. And I'm going to dissolve these edges. And we can get rid of some of the polygons. So let's switch to polygon mode. And I'm going to select these ones and these ones. And these ones down here and delete them. And I'm going to keep these ones for now because we need to create this diagonal section here. So part of the pattern is more or less already finished. And in order to get this area down here, we're going to use a bool object and a cube. Now, if you select one of these polygons, you can see this has a height of seven centimeters. So let's create a cube and make it seven centimeters on the X axis. And I'm going to switch on snapping and use the move tool, drag this over and snap it to here and on the coordinates tab, I'm going to change the rotation of the cube to minus 45 degrees. And we also need to change the height. Let's bring this down to about here. Make sure to keep this top area of the cube inside of this square here. So this looks like this now. And we can put this in a bool object and subtract the cube from our other object here. And I'll create a single object and hide the new edges and make that bool object editable. Let's get rid of that selection tag. And we need geometry here. So I'm going to use the polygon pen tool, hold down shift, left click and drag to create polygons in between here. I'll just switch off snapping. Now we can select these polygons here and delete them. 
So that is our pattern. And before we continue, we can optimize the geometry a little bit. There's some edges that we don't need anymore, like the ones down here. So I'll select them and dissolve them. We can also dissolve this edge here, these two, these ones, and these ones over here. We can also optimize some of the corners. And I'm going to do that by welding points. And we can also select these points down here and weld them. And this will create a triangle. We're going to get rid of that a little bit later. We can also dissolve this edge. And it's quite important that you do that because some of these patterns, although the basic geometry is very simple, it, these patterns do tend to create a lot of polygons. So I'm going to optimize everything that I can. Let's go to model mode and I'm going to switch on enable axis and snapping. And I'm going to grab my move tool, left click and drag and snap the object axis to this top corner here. Switch off enable axis and let's put this in a symmetry object. I'm going to make this editable. We can double click on one of these edges to select the entire loop. Just be careful because we need to deselect these edges down here. I'm going to dissolve these. Go back to model mode, switch on enable axis, and I'm going to move the axis to this bottom corner here. And now we can use two more symmetry objects. Let's switch one of these to XZ, make it editable. And again, optimize the geometry a little bit. We can dissolve this edge loop here at the center. We can also dissolve these edges here and these ones. Again, we need to deselect a couple. Let's dissolve these. And we still have these holes in here. We can use close polygon hole to get rid of those. And if you switch to polygon mode, you can see we have eight n-gons here. And we also have these triangles. I want to get rid of both of them. And what I'll do in order to do that is I'm going to select the points here. And use connect points edges. And then we can select these edges here and dissolve them. And in order to get rid of the triangles, what I'm going to do is I'll select these edges here and connect them. And I'll do the same with these edges here. And let's turn these into proper quads by selecting these points. And I'll just scale these down a little bit to about here maybe. And then we just need to do the same thing over here. So first of all, I'll connect these points, dissolve these edges. And then I'm going to connect these edges here. And these ones, select these points and scale them down. So let's do a quick check. I'm using a free plugin called Special Selections. 
which lets me select triangles, quads, and n-gons. I'm going to select all quads. You can see we only have quads right now. So that is the polygon version of this pattern. In order to get the spline version, we can create the spline version from the edges of this object. But before I do, there's one more thing I want to optimize, which is these corners. And also we need to extrude the edges on the outside a little bit to get the same thickness that we have here on the inside. But first of all, I'll just weld these points to the corner point. And then we can double click on one of these edges to select the entire loop on the outside. And I'm going to extrude these edges using an offset of 3.5. Let's go to the move tool again, double click on one of these edges, which should select all of these and we can dissolve these. And now in edge mode, I'm going to go to select and do an outline selection. If I left click on any of these edges, we should select all of the edges that we need. And then we can go to mesh commands, edge to spline. And this will give us a spline version. If you go to point mode, you can see that for this spline, we have a lot of points that we don't really need. So I'm going to clean that up by deleting everything that I don't want. And if I delete these points, you can see we're getting this gap here. That's because our spline is not closed. So let's go ahead and close that. And I'll just switch off that reference image. And let's go ahead and delete all of these points here. Then we just need to check the inside of the pattern. There's only a couple of points that we need to delete here. And we can put this in an extrude object to check if everything's okay. Sometimes if you forget to delete a point, I'll just create one here. And you can see you get these edges in between when you use the extrude object and you can, it, it helps you to, to spot mistakes like this. I'll just undo that. So that is how I created my Chinese patterns. And by the way, I hope you've checked the a video description, I uploaded the reference image for you. You can use that to create that same pattern if you want to. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.